Hello everyone, my name is Kate Van Heysen. I'm a PhD student at the UNSPSL and the Institut Pasteur in Paris, working on the supervision of Gabriel Perret and Laura Cantini. And today I want to introduce Marie, our new tool for paired single cell multiomics integration. Single cell multiomics technologies like SiteSeq or Tenex Multiome are transforming the way we approach many biological problems by measuring the cell at several layers of regulation at the same time. For example, chromatin accessibility, gene expression, and surface proteins for the same cell. And of course, this has had a great impact on our understanding of the immune system, of development, and of complex diseases like cancer. And the growing interest for single cell multiomics can be illustrated by this plot, where I showed a number of publications on PubMed across the years. You can see that there's a real gain of popularity of these technologies. Another thing that has grown in the last few years is the number of multiomics sequencing technologies themselves, and they're being developed at a very fast pace. And analyzing this type of data requires specific computational methods capable of jointly analyzing complementary omics. These are called paired single cell multiomics integration methods. And they generally fall into two categories. First, linear methods which are by, by nature very interpretable, uh, but they might also be too simple to properly model the data. And then you have deep learning methods that are more complex, and just more expressive, but they pay a price in terms of interpretability. What we propose is Moglu, a new method that pushes the boundaries of linear models by using optimal transport to make the model more expressive. And Moki builds upon widely used tools from the SCVerse to cluster, visualize, and interpret single cell multiomics data. At its core, Moki is a non negative matrix factorization model, meaning that we will decompose a paired multiomics data set into a product of omics specific biological signatures and a shared low dimensional embedding of the sets. This type of model has been around for a while but it has a limitation in the context of single cell data. Typically, the way you learn the matrices H and W would be by optimizing a Euclidean loss between the data and the product H times W. So it's, you need some notion of similarity between cells, and typically as the Euclidean distance. But Euclidean distance is not a good fit for single cell data. One of the main reasons for this is that single cell data is very noisy. In particular, there's a lot of missing information uh, due to dropouts that makes the data very sparse. And if dropouts hide the expression of an important marker gene or some cell type, then our algorithm might conclude that some cell does not belong to a certain cell type. In this case, it would be good to look at other genes for context to get a proper view of the cell's identity. But the Euclidean distance considers each gene independently and thus does not take the context into account. So can we do better than that? It turns out we can using optimal transport. Optimal transport was originally introduced in the 18th century as the physical effort needed to move around powers of Earth from one distribution to another distribution. Now this might seem like a very 18th century problem to have, but Optimal transport has had a great impact on modern computing science because it defines more general notion of distance between probability distributions. And this distance is defined as the total efforts needed to transform one distribution into another by reorganizing mass. Optimal transport has been applied in the context of computer vision, natural language processing, but also biology and most notably to study the evolution of cells through time. Here, we propose to use optimal transport to compare cells, which we view as discrete distributions of a space of genes, proteins, or of peaks. And our approach takes into account some notion of similarity between genes, and this allows you to take advantage of the context to be more robust to drop out noise. Going back to the description of the model, we use optimal transport, more exactly a fast approximation thereof as a reconstruction loss to my data and our product H times W, and a sparsity inducing regularization that improves the interpretability. 
Now, there's some basic tasks that you will expect an integration method to do well at. And to benchmark our method, we created six experiments that illustrate specific challenges to single cell multi integration. And here I'm showing one that I particularly like, where if you took the RNA signal or the ATAX signal individually, you would only distinguish two groups of cells. Whereas if you take the two together, you'll see that there's actually three groups of cells. And Oakley does quite well at this problem. And it may seem like a simple task, but existing methods are often surprisingly challenged by these experiments and other experiments that uh, we perform. And in those six settings, Mogli outperforms existing methods according to CWET score, maximum adjusted rent index, and purity score. Three, three metrics to assess the quality of the methods and embeddings. Now, in complex real data profiles from different tissues and using different technologies, Mogli is competitive with the state of the art in terms of clustering, although no single method really stands out. It might be because in real data, uh, it's just a more difficult problem and the ground truth we have access to is not always satisfying. Here I'm showing results on the bone marrow size data datasets from the Open Problems Challenge. We can see that Mogli correctly separates some cell types that are not necessarily separated in other methods. Now, while for clustering, um, the race might seem a bit tight, one area we definitely improve in is uh, biological interpretability. And to showcase this, we analyzed a TC dataset profiled with three omics, gene expression, chromatin exhibility, and surface proteins. And in this dataset, we compare how interpretable the signatures of several linear methods are. And here I'm showing the compared weight of signatures in CD80 cells and other cell types. So, Factors or biological signatures that are specific to CD80 cells should be on the upper left corner of this plot. And you can see that while Mowgli has two factors that are only expressed in CD80 cells and not in other cell types, MOFA plus and regular NMF do not have uh, such specific signals. So this means that Mowgli's signature should contain information that is specific to a cell type. And this is not restricted to broad cell types like C8 or C40 cells. In fact, if you look closely at the individual signatures, you can find so there's one specific, specific on CD8 TEM cells, one for memory B cells, one for plasma C3 D cells, and so on. And here what I'm showing is the weight of a certain factor across cells to highlight the specific nature of these factors. Now, how do we know that uh, factor number 49 is associated with cd uh, 8 effective memory uh, T cells? Well, using the top genes, you can perform gene set enrichment. Using the top peaks, you can perform transcription factor motif enrichment. And using the top proteins, you can do for markers. And together, different omics give you a full picture of um, a biological signature's meaning. And an interesting fact here is that the enriched transcription factor motifs happen to uh, target the top genes as signatures. Uh, so this is a cross omics information that supports our interpretation further. If you would want to know more about Nobi or carry out this type of analysis for your own data, then have a look at our preprint, Paired Single Cell Multi-Omix Integration with Mowgli. And uh, look at our GitHub for um, for guidelines on how to how to use the tool. And installation is as easy as writing pip install Mogli. With this, I would like to thank Laura and Gabriel, my supervisors, uh, as well as Ina that helped me for this project. And I would also like to thank everyone that gave their inputs along the way, and you for your attention.